This video sums up over 12 years of what I've learned by doing architectural visualization in Blender. Tip number one, make sun more interesting. Default sun is boring and with this simple trick you can make it look much better. Go to the environment node editor, create two sky textures and mix them. We need to smoothen the shadows, so change the sun size in one of the nodes to 1 and in the other to 4. In one of the nodes you can offset the rotation just a little bit. And now you have two suns casting two different shadows which mix together and simply look great. You can desaturate both nodes for a bit more realistic look. Tip number two, make HDR images more interesting. You can modify the HDR image in Blender so it affects the scene in any way you want. Add the HDR image to the environment node editor and map it so it displays correctly. Copy the background node and mix it with the first one and then add the light path node. Plug the camera ray to mix shader and increase the background strength to 10. Environment is now brighter but the interior is still illuminated as before. Let's dig deeper, copy the background node again and mix it with the setup. This time plug the diffuse ray to mix and desaturate it. This trick removes the diffuse color cast by the HDR image and makes the rendering more realistic. Tip number 3. Master the light path node and ray visibility settings. As you've just seen, the light path node is a very powerful tool that allows you to adjust the 3D scene in many useful ways. It would take too much time to cover all of its features now, but I've created a whole dedicated video on that topic which is linked in the description. Tip number 4. Use color temperature. Using color temperature instead of RGB values or color values will help you achieving more realistic results. In lamp settings, enable nodes by pressing this button. Add the black body node and connect it to the color input. And now set the temperature. Common values are 3600 for warm indoor light or 5500 for neutral daylight. Anything above that is good for cold overcast effect. Tip number 5. Use as many references as you can. It is very hard to create a realistic scene just from your imagination. Photo references, on the other hand, will always help you to nail the look that you're looking for. This tip is an ultimate cheat code of many 3D artists out there. It helps them creating stunning visuals and progressing much, much faster. Tip number 6. The render settings. So here's my sampling setup, nothing really special here except of the noise threshold which is set 10 times lower as in the viewport preview. For light paths I'm using the value of 6 for both diffuse and glossy bounces and that improves the general illumination quality in the scene, especially when you increase the glossy bounces this improves the way the glass materials render. As for the clamping, I'm using the value of 9, which is usually a good starting point that eliminates a lot of noise from the scene, however it might make sometimes your illumination look flat. Now when I'm editing this video I realized that instead of explaining how to fix it I just kept on going, so I'm gonna drop a few bonus tips at the end of the video, be sure to check them out. As of performance, I'm always enabling tiling and my tile size is around 400 because this gives me the most optimal render times when I'm using the full frame resolution. However, if you want to increase your rendering size to 4K, for example, then you also have to adjust your tiling accordingly. The tile size also has to become bigger, but only on GPU rendering. When you plan using CPU rendering, then use as small tile as possible. Tip number seven, simplify. If you're running out of memory while rendering, try using the simplify option. You can scale down all textures to the selected resolution, which is super helpful when you have many materials. Tip number eight, instancing. You can multiply objects in the scene by using Alt D shortcut instead of Shift D. What it does is creating an instance of an object instead of its copy. You can have thousands of mesh instances and still render them without a problem, where with duplicated objects it won't be possible. Tip number nine, lens shift. Rotating camera in the vertical axis disturbs the image composition. Use the lens shift option instead to frame your shot. You can also decrease the lens angle if you want to capture more objects. Tip number 10. Composition guides. If you want to make great renderings, start with improving your image composition. Enable composition guides in Blender camera to frame your shots better. My personal favorite is golden ratio. This is another topic I could spend hours talking about, but guess what? I already did. A free chapter to my Art of Rendering Masterclass is linked in the video description, so if you want to learn more about composition, be sure to check it out. Tip number 11. Area lamps. Area lamps are a great way to balance illumination in your scene. 
the way I do it is placing them in the windows and setting their color to something cold like 7500 kelvins using the black body note from tip number 4. And now by adding the sunlight, warm and cold tones even themselves out creating a very balanced look. Tip number 12, area lamp shapes. You can adjust the area lamp shape from simple square or rectangle to circle and ellipse. This feature was added to Blender 2.9 and I feel like many users still don't know about it and you should know about it because it is a cool feature. Tip number 13, spot lamps. I use spot lamps even more often than area lamps because they are quick to render, easy to control and give me soft shadows that look very realistic. Set them wide and warm and balance with cold area lamps in the windows. A quick recipe for perfect interior look. Tip number 14, glass material. This is one of the most important tips you'll learn from this video. Here's how to create a proper looking glass shader for windows or any other thin glass surface. Delete the principal BSDF shader and mix the glossy and transparent shaders. Reduce the roughness to near zero. Add a layer weight node and plug the facing output to the mix shader. Add the RGB curves node and drop it before the mix shader. Shape the curve so it looks like this. And with your glass object surface selected, go to the object properties, visibility, ray visibility and leave the camera and glossy options on. This is a thin glass material that renders super fast, doesn't have any refraction glitches and works great with any light. Tip number 15. Don't use IOR for reflections. I've seen many people using the Fernal node and its IOR value to control the material reflections. In theory, you can assign a real-world reflection values to the IOR. In practice, it generates many shading bugs, especially on two-sided materials like paper, curtains or leaves. Tip number 16. Use single textures more often. Every image texture has at least three color channels, red, green and blue. They usually look quite different and you can use them as a bump, glossy or reflection inputs in your material. This saves a lot of memory and improves the preview and render times because you're using just one image instead of four. Drag and drop the image texture and add the separate color node. You can preview the color channels by plugging them as a base color. Adjust one property at a time. I'll start with bump. It's easier to set bump on a dark reflective surface. I disconnect the bump when I'm adjusting the roughness and I use color ramp to fine tune the look. Finish by plugging in all the inputs. Bonus tip number one, clamp settings. As I mentioned before, my default setting for both lights is nine. However, it sometimes kills the dynamic range of the image. To fix it, all you have to do is to increase the direct light clamping to anything around 30. It will keep the bright tones cast by direct light sources while still eliminating tons of noise. Bonus tip number two, environment reflections. By default, the environment reflections are quite dark in Blender, so I like to boost them. I'm using the exact same setup as in tip number one. Add a background node and set its strength to 10. Add a mix node and blend both setups. Add the light path node and plug the gloss array output to the mix node. The environment will now be reflected 10 times stronger. Bonus tip number three, Nvidia optics. This might be obvious, but I've seen so many Blender users not having optics enabled, it's unreal. Unless you're using some ancient Nvidia GPU, go to the preferences and see if the optic settings are available. If not, update your graphics card drivers. And by the way, if you'd like to know what GPU and PC specs I'm using, all details are in the video description. Just keep in mind you can work professionally in Blender with a much simpler setup. For the past three years I did all my professional projects on this laptop which only has RTX 2070. Bonus tip number four, multiple important samples. Have you ever wondered what does this setting do or why do some of your lamps all of a sudden disappear even if you set their strength to a million? The final bonus tip can be found in the video card appearing on the screen right now.